the Marlins hired Gabe Kapler as their assistant general manager. They sure did. I thought that was fascinating. He's going to work directly beneath president of baseball operations, Peter Bendix. His main role will be with player development, but he'll also be involved in all areas of baseball operations. Um, Brig, do you think that the front office is a better fit for Kapler or is he better in the dugout? I mean, I don't know. The honest answer is I don't know. We haven't seen him in the front office, so we, it'll be interesting to see. Not in any significant maybe. role. Yeah. Right. Maybe. Um, I don't know. I think I think what we know about Kapler is he, based on the evidence, just let's just, this is inductive reasoning, right? Okay. But it, he's he clearly, he has to be a great baseball mind at some level, right? Or they nobody would keep him around. Right. He's got to be a great influence guy one way or the other, or nobody would keep him around. He's got to be a team player and willing to toe the party line, but also has just enough influence and say and speaks his mind enough. He's got to have all the tools that that is required, but he's got to have a great baseball mind or people would kick him out. The the only reason to sustain this much, uh, th- to have this much like lack of success, I guess, be this consistently almost good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is that you just have to be a terrific thinker. Yeah. Yeah, and he yeah, he clearly sees something that other people don't, which, you know, sets him apart from other people, other managers, other I guess assistant GMs now. Yeah. Right. I think you're right though about having a great baseball mind. And you know, there are a lot of guys who manage who do but they don't. Sure. You know. It's like, yeah, they understand the game, but they don't have that ultra high baseball IQ. I feel like Gabe Kapler has that because he, he had some success in San Francisco. That was, yeah, he had good teams like this year, right. down year, whatever. And we talked sure. about two years ago, that was a fluke, but it's always a fluke when you win that many games. You have That's some what I mean. that go your way. Yeah. His, his track record is just, it's almost really good, right? It's just under, mm-hmm. like, I don't know what he needs, but it, it's it's not there. Whatever it is, it's just not there. Yeah. And so maybe switching it up to the front office is the right answer because he clearly brings a lot to the table or mm-hmm. people wouldn't keep hiring him. One thing that is interesting to me about this, though, is going to the Marlins. Um, I watched a video where uh, it was Foul Territory podcast. They were talking to, a, I believe, it was a Marlins reporter or somebody, somebody who had inside the inside scoop on the Kim Ng departure. Yeah, and basically she left because it was a toxic work environment. Right. And so I wonder what kind of a what kind of people they're looking for to fill roles so that it's not toxic, or, or is it just generally toxic? And does he fit well into that? Yeah. And is that the problem he's had elsewhere is that he brings a level of toxicity that doesn't overflow into everything, but it's their brand of toxic and that's what they want. So they went and found him. I don't know. Could be. Could be. Yeah. Here's the other thing you got to remember about Gabe Kapler in Miami. And this, I think, is where it was what it all comes down to. There's a lot of coconut oil. Exactly. Yeah. That is exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly the sun is hot. There's coconut oil, and he's getting paid to be there. So, right. <laughs> ain't yeah. no thing. Yeah. 